Peyton Titus, the state newspaper. Asia, I just wanted to ask, I know there's been a lot of people asking how you feel about coming back here, but now yeah. that you actually are back here, I guess, how did it feel putting up shots in there uh, compared to what you anticipated? Um, Peyton's our local state. Oh, state I mean, I see David still here. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's tons of fun being here. I, I, I anticipated it to be high, very emotional for me. I uh, never would have thought I'd be back here as a pro, uh, let alone playing on the court. Uh, our lovely equipment manager gave me my same locker in college, so that, I think that's when it really hit me. I was like, oh, this really used, they did some things. I got a lounge and painted things. I was like, okay, they got money now. Um, but no, it, it's truly a blessing to be back here, uh, to have my teammates, they were screaming on the bus, looking at the statue, and like, it's just, that right there touched my heart. Uh, Columbia obviously raised me, uh, so there's gonna be a lot of people here that's watched me grow up, so I'm just happy to be back, uh, healthy, and here with my professional team. Uh, David Kloniker, Post and Courier. AJ, welcome back. Thank you. Um, just looking around at not only this event, but as how women's basketball continues to grow, continues to take steps, just how do you uh, consider your role in it, and what do you think about the growth of the game? My role? Oh, man, I feel like my role is just – just like anybody else's role, just trying to plant seeds for the next generation to, to flourish and, and we grow within that. Um, I think my role was a part of just being me, uh, being true to who I am and uh, being that unapologetically uh, and welcoming people in that space. And then I think just watching the growth of the game has truly been amazing. Uh, it's kind of like we went from the get out of the kitchen comments to make the sandwich comments to now everyone's like, oh my God, yeah, back, they used to tell us that. Mm -mm. And I can't even cook. Fix my plate. <laughs> yeah, it was like more of that. And now it's like, oh my gosh, I need to catch a game. So like, it's pretty cool to see the flip of, of people talking about our game. But um, I'm glad to be in it. I feel like everybody in this room has been screaming it. So now people are just hopping on the bandwagon, which is cool. I hope it stays. Hey, y'all. I have multiple questions. What was, uh, this is for Coach Hammond and Coach Daly. What were the talks about um, hosting here and how did that come about? I mean, for us, we couldn't get a preseason game. Nobody would play us. Oh. So uh, I think Connecticut was the one team that was like, yeah, if you want to come out here. And we're like, eh, I don't think we want to fly all the way out there um, for a preseason game. But we, we kind of wanted to get our White House visit mm -hmm. in, but also out of the way. And then, you know, um, the idea came about, like, well, let's just play an exhibition game. And wouldn't it be great to bring Asia back to South Carolina? And so I called A, and I was like, how would you feel about that? And she was like, yeah, that would be dope. Like, so I was like, okay, cool. Because a lot of times, you know, I don't want to put her in situations. <laughs> you know, she, she deals with enough. She has enough on her plate, and it can be super stressful for athletes to go back um, to where they're just getting pulled in a thousand different directions. But she always handles herself gracefully. Um, so once she said yes, we were, uh, we were trying to move those wheels. Mm -hmm. And we talk about the visibility and having Asia come back and a team, honestly, a largely black team playing Puerto Rico in the South. Um, the importance of that, Coach Staley, and why you decided to host them too. Um, I mean, Pro Hoops. Pro Hoops is the visionary behind putting this game on, the visionary, the finances, um, and then, you know, the Aces agreeing to do it, the Puerto Rican team agreeing to do it, the WNBA allowing us to do it. I think it, it, they all play a role in bringing, um, bringing the Aces here, bringing Asia back. I think it's, you know, I don't think there will be another preseason game that will be as attended mm -hmm. as this one. Um, so I think it, it just made sense for all of us to, to do the right thing. And for us, I'm happy that our fans get a chance to see Asia and see what great basketball looks like. I mean, they are the standard. I think they know what great basketball looks like. Right. Oh. They've been watching. Well, 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 five years, you know. She, how long you been out? This is year seven for me. Ooh. Ooh. So I haven't really seen her up close in seven <laughs> years. And she, I mean, she's got, she's got muscles in her, her legs and her arms now. Oh. So we haven't seen that. So she's bringing that back. <laughs> and lastly, uh, for you, A, uh, Y'all say aces versus everybody, but yes. we're aces for everybody here. Yeah. So what's the, <laughs> why is your team particularly necessary in the sports landscape? And what is so special about this fan base in South Carolina and the aces fan base? Man, um, I just feel like 
both fan bases really grew together. I feel like as the, as the Aces and being new to Vegas, we had to grow our fan base. We had to have people come out and watch us. And then the first year, we didn't make playoffs. So it was hard. Like, you got to win to bring people in. And it was kind of the same with South Carolina. Like, it was a growing fan base that really grew over time. And now you see what it is. You see an invested fan base. And I think that goes hand in hand when they talk about Aces in, in South Carolina. It's like, it's been moments where our backs were against the wall and we really reached out to our fans and they've helped us up the most. And I think you, we're starting to see that across women's basketball, but I can honestly say that I really saw it really start in South Carolina and Vegas. And so I'm so glad to be a part of it. I'm so glad to watch the growth of it because it's been amazing. When I was a young recruit coming to these South Carolina games when it was a little quiet. And now <laughs> I saw people rushing down to seats for general admission. I see what they have now. And then it's the same for Aces. I mean, we're selling out. Uh, so just the growth and within these two fan bases, this has truly been so special and like I'm glad that they are just they follow me I'm glad that they support us um, and the best is yet to come but it is aces versus everybody but we also appreciate aces for everybody as well that's a new let, one let aces for piggy, everybody yeah <laughs> let me let me piggyback off of that because um, I do think Nikki Fargus mm -hmm. has been intentional in, in integrating the fan bases I think there's there's been a disconnect from college to WNBA mm -hmm. And you, you have to be intentional nowadays. This isn't the first time the ACES organization has been in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, Nikki's been doing events here um, as far as two or three years ago. And now this is what's come out of it. So it's a lot of people just really. And I, I, would, I would give it to Nikki because I think Nikki really understands um, coaching on this level and seeing the disconnect between our, our collegiates and our pros. And we got to have a connection because we're all wanting basketball to, to rise up to its uh, full potential. Lulu Kessin, Greenville News. Becky, for you, what is it like being here in Columbia and sort of seeing everything through Asia's eyes and where she kind of came into her own as a player? Um, I don't know. It's, she's just a really special person. Um, Actually, I, I read her book, and so it gave me a glimpse into some things that she's dealt with. It helped me understand her better, um, but also, like, to come back and see, like, her roots. Like, she is the way she is for a reason, and those are her roots. And um, she's just a tremendous superstar, graceful. What you see is what you get every day. This is not a put-on. She is the same person. <laughs> Um, and she's the same person every day, and she also happens to be the greatest basketball player on the planet. Um, so to come back here, I was really excited. I didn't know if she was going to be on board, like I said, when I called her, because it's a lot on her. But I was really excited uh, to kind of bring her home, because she's kind of a hometown. Like, if you know her, she's kind of hometown, small town girl. But obviously, she's, she's reaching the world in different ways. And so um, to kind of come back and see see even her parents reaction is like is special to me being a parent like it, it's just yeah. it's just really cool and um it's not by accident she is who she is and she's where she's at it's because of i don't know she's just she's built different and um you know south carolina built her so why not come back <laughs> On Cole, GameCockScoop.com, if Dawn and Becky, could you take this, please? Uh, Dawn, you mentioned the preseason game. This is going to be one of the biggest attended ever. Do you see this as an avenue maybe for future women's basketball growth, playing preseason games in college campuses, former players? And Becky, is that something you think would any of your other players might be interested in in the future? Excuse me. Um, I would say it, it's, it should happen more often. Um, you just got to get the financial backing because we don't want to pull from the Aces or any other team that would come here. They should come here and should not should not have to pay an expense. Like, we should pay for it all. I don't know who was able to do that all the time. <laughs> but if we want to grow the game, somebody should find the funding uh, because it's beautiful. It's, it's going the, the turnout's going to be great. The talent that you see on the floor is going to be great. The coaching's going to be great. The atmosphere is going to be great, and it's what – you know, it's what our, our sport needs. Hey, friends. Uh, Whitney Sullivan with WLTX. So my first question is for you, Asia. Um, so, so many people see you as a hero, right? Not just because of what you do on the court, but off the court. And you use your platform to advocate for causes that you are passionate about. So my question for you is, when it comes to the salary difference between WNBA and NBA, what do you want to see moving forward? What do you think needs to happen in order to close that gap? Uh, investing 
Uh, literally putting your money where, like, where your mouth is. It sounds good. It really sounds good. It looks great on Twitter. It looks great on social. But what are we doing behind the scenes to make sure that we continue to invest in women's sports in general? Uh, obviously, I'm going to say basketball because that's my sport and I love money. Uh, but <laughs> at the end of the day, like, this isn't, like Nikki said in the White House, like, this isn't a fancy, this isn't a fad, this, this isn't a trend, and I feel like it's, it's always a trend. It's always around March, everyone falls in love, and then as soon as summer comes around, it just drops and it disappears and it just started, then you really don't hear from us. And then it comes back like, we gotta invest in these women. We have to really put the money into these women to push the needle forward. Um, and I think that's what it's gonna take. We gotta take those big sponsors and these big names. Uh, and I'm blessed to have sponsors that follow me. Shout out to Gatorade, just sign, period. Um, <laughs> Congratulations. Shout out, thank you. Shout out, to, like, shout out to those sponsors that are willing to like do it and just like not just say it and when it's a month or what it, they support it no do it all the time and that's what it's going to take to continue it's like those people that have a seat at the table speak up be that voice for the voices use their platform in that way because not a lot of us have that seat so if you are in that seat use your platform to uplift others and i think that's what it's going to take absolutely and coach for you you've moved the needle when it comes to this conversation as well what do you want to see moving forward i mean um i i think What's happened because we've had a WNBA is um, all the younger players that's coming up, they have a, a carrot dangled in front of them for all of their life. Asia has only have, has known the WNBA all her life. Mm -hmm. I mean, young people growing up, they've only have known the WNBA all of their life. Um, if you go back to Becky and I, I mean, baby, Becky's a little younger than I. I mean, I, I didn't know the WNBA when I was growing up. I only knew the NBA. So we would, you know, imagine us being in the NBA. They don't have to imagine anymore. I, I want a league that's that's going to pay players what they're worth. I want I want a league that's going to pay coaches what they're worth. Now we, I mean, it's a it's really a, a still a startup business. Um, the NBA wasn't what it what it's been the first 28 years of its existence. We got to continue to grow. I mean, there is opportunity for investors to get a return on their investment, um, but it has to start somewhere. Like, I, I, and it's a great start, but the novelty of the WNBA has worn off. Now we need to insert some more innovative ideas to, to push the needle forward. And for us to, you know, have a real league, have the first, you know, millionaire player we got the first millionaire coach. Let's let's follow suit. And and I know, I I, I know, um, at the end of the day, um, ownership will be a valuable asset to to whoever wants to step up. Absolutely. And my last question. Uh, so Asia, I have to tell you, I am a Clemson grad. Don't hold it against me. I know, right? But my eight-year-old niece is a huge Gamecock fan. And she's a Gamecock fan because of the USC women's basketball team. And when she comes to Colonial Life Arena, she sees your statue and she says, I want to be like Asia, right? So what does that feel like to know that you are impacting young girls right here? It's something that never gets old. It's something that is just an incredible feeling to know that like I, I'm a role model uh, because I remember being in that same position. Like I, I have my role models that I looked up to and I wanted to be. And so to now see the roles flipped and young girls are saying that to me, it's incredible. Uh, but my biggest thing is I want them to know that it's real. I want them to know how real I am and know that I, I have my days where I don't want to be Asia, but I, I love, I still love Asia. And I think that's the best part about it is that I can connect with them on a normal level not necessarily like, oh my gosh, you have everything, because I don't. I don't want everything. Uh, but I am truly blessed to be in that situation, uh, and I hope that I can continue to make them proud. That is my why. Uh, the reason why I go out there and play with so much passion, because I know there's, there's a young girl out there that's dreaming to be me, so why not make her dreams turn into a reality? I'd just like to piggyback, too, off what Dawn said, in the sense of like when we were growing up, like I had all Michael Jordan posters. Like there was, there was no league for us to play. And even early on in the W, I feel like there was this wave. And then there was this like wave where it wasn't cool. Mm -hmm. And it was actually cool to knock on women and knock on the sport. And, you know, I'm not particularly a, a, a golf fan, but I don't get on my platforms to trash golf. Right. You know, and I think people were so went out of their way to, to go at these women. And it's time, like she said, that we're paying them what they're worth. And as the most elite women's basketball players on the planet, they are the best of the best. 
And so if we can just continue to, you know, I told Don, you know, the, the rising tide raises all ships, and it's our job to keep, continue to make sure that that tide rises and it impacts the next generation. But the little girls now, legit, because even when we were, me and Don were playing, if you asked most kids, they would, just, little girls, they would tell you the goal was still Kobe Bryant or, you know, Michael Jordan. And it was, it's not now until you're seeing, like, I'll give you an example. I have two little boys. And they had two little friends coming over, and they're playing basketball in my pool. And they're saying, I'm Asia Wilson. I'm Chelsea Gray. <laughs> my dad said, wouldn't see that 12 years ago. <laughs> like, it, it, that's the shift that, that we're trying to push for, um, and that the, these little boys and these little girls recognize greatness and want to strive after it, no matter what, who, who's wearing that jersey. or They, they recognize the greatness. And um, that's what sh the, these guys represent. I think Don represents it at South Carolina, the, the standard. And it's really great for our sport, but it's also great for that next generation to have modeled to them. One more in the room, and then we'll close out with a couple on Zoom. Okay, well, if this is going to be the last one. Um, Chantel Powell, no cap space. Uh, Asia, you say you had to quickly get to the bookstore because you had a list of people <laughs> that uh, owe you some game cockfits. Uh, I believe Candace Parker was on there. Yeah, a couple so, times. Yeah, so like with her retiring, how are you gonna get her to pay up? Oh, it's gonna be. She gotta I'll, come through Vegas sometime. Yeah, <laughs> she gonna have to be on TNT and some Garden in Black. I don't care. We gonna find a way. When there's a will, there's a way. So every in the boardroom, anywhere in the boardroom, <laughs> any first, first board meeting with, with Adidas. Anywhere she gonna have, she gonna find. I'm listen, Candice. I know you out there listening, baby girl. We miss you, but trust your Garden in Black is on the way as well. Can't wait. <laughs> Jackie's like struggling. Y'all do funny have with to wear the, the locker. Oh yeah, that was hilarious. Retire in peace, Candace. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Hi all, uh, Asia. I wanted to ask you, going into year seven now, looking at the two sitting next to you, just what they've meant to you. Now that you get to play in this arena for one of them, having already been played in this arena for the other one, just what these two women have meant to you in your career at six Man. being as you get now into year number seven. Man, oh man, these two here has, they mold me into the woman and the player that I am today, and I am so grateful, and y'all know I'm emotional, so I'm trying not to cry, but no, they have done, I know, I'm trying, they have done so much sacrifice, they've had so much patience with me and my dyslexic mind, um, and, I, and I love them for that, and just to be back and to have played She's watching the softball game. To have played uh, under Coach Daly and to currently now be playing under Becky and just having this moment, it's just, it's truly surreal. And I, I can't thank these two enough for just the time that they've spent, the talks that we've had, the, the realness, the honesty that they give me, it's incredible. And it's, we've had conversations that we will never, ever, 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 ever share. <laughs> and I love those conversations. Those are the ones that I hold on to the most. And I, I'm forever grateful, I'm forever in their debt because without them, I wouldn't be a champion. <laughs> I would not be the winner, the leader that you see today, um, the outspoken woman that y'all see today. I wouldn't be any of that if it wasn't for these two on my left and my right. So I am always grateful for these two here. They have changed the game. They've changed the culture uh, for a lot of people in a lot of different ways. So I am grateful to ever say that I've coached under both of them. Two Hall of Famers. Talk about they got orange, they got orange jackets. Oh my God, y'all. Listen, this is greatness. So I I'm happy just to be just one of their players. <laughs> A creamsicle orange. Oh, uh, I mean, easy, easy, easy. I mean, Asia, Asia came to to play every 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 practice. Um, I think um, what what's really um, super special about Asia for me is she found herself very early in life, like who she is, what she stands for, what she believes in, um, and now she's blossoming. Um, I mean, the the basketball is easy; it's a testament. But I like the growth with, with the growth that took place off the court, um, and you know, to be so young to have a bestseller book. 
Um, that is all because she found herself very early on in life. Because you, you know, me at 26, 27, I didn't know whether I was coming or going. Um, but Asia had it all together. And if not, she found out the way to get it together. And she was unafraid to ask. So, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of her. Um, I'm glad to have coached her. Coach Boyer and I just said that um, while we were watching practice and watching her move, like, she was like, look at her. We were like, look at her. And I was like, we got a chance to coach her. <laughs> it's almost like an out-of-body experience because you, you watch her out there as a pro and it's just effortless. I mean, you're watching the, the best player in the world work, work at 27. And I, and I said, I think I told this to Becky, like she's better than most best players in the world at an early age because she found who she is. I think when you're able to figure out who you are, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what people say or do. You're able to block them out, and you're able to work on your craft, and you, you, you be the best at your craft, and that's Asia. Um, my goals, my goals are pretty much the same uh, as I've gone through my career as a professional. It's just be better than I was last year. Uh, do whatever I can to be different. I want to want people to look at me this year and be like, oh, okay, like we see she's been working on that. Oh, that's been different. Whether it's just she can play longer or she's extended her range, different stuff like that is really my goal in this season and just making sure that our locker room is close knit. Uh, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of commotion going on around our league, around women's basketball, uh, but we still got to go out there and play. We still have to be the best team that we can be. So making sure that my locker room's intact and ready to rock and roll whenever there is, is, is that's a huge goal of mine. And when you're talking about a three-peat, I don't think we look at it as a three-peat. We look at it as just like we're going for another one. Um, and, and just really, because I feel like once you get that in your mind, it's a hot mess. Uh, so <laughs> the biggest thing is just making sure, like keeping the main thing the main thing, and that's winning a championship. That's going to always be our goal. That's always been my goal. Um, so that's going to be our mindset heading into this game uh, this weekend and then start of the regular season. Last two, Christos. Christos. Hello, ladies. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for doing this. Uh, Coach Trump, question for you. Working next to Greg Popovich, and everybody knows that Coach Popovich has been done and had a great relationship on and off the floor, great connection. The same connection between you and Asia on and off the floor. And also, on the occasion of uh, last, uh, yesterday's visit to the White uh, House, can you see Asia's uh, future friend? Uh, oh, child, Christos, don't put I'll that on me. I'll vote for her. I like my hair. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm about to lose my hair over this country. <laughs> don't put me up in there. No, I mean, um, look, at the end of the day, when you have really great people. Tim Duncan's a great human being. Asia is a great human being. Um, and that happen to be phenomenal basketball players. I think Asia will be in the same, similar sentences, uh, similar comparisons as, as Timmy was. Um, so it's really, you know, one of my first conversations with Asia, you know, I, I asked her to let me coach her hard. And, and she said, yeah. I said, and let me coach you hard in front of your teammates. And she said, OK, I got you. And it's just kind of been um, a really great relationship. It let me know early on what kind of athlete, what kind of mindset, what kind of person I was dealing with. Um, and, and similar to Tim, you know, she's not the superstar that, that, that walks on the shoulders and heads of others. She's the superstar that brings everybody up with her. And that's a different kind of superstar. Because a lot of people, you know, there's different kind of leaders, there's different kind of goats. But I think the greatest of all is the one that makes their teammates the greatest. And she has a real knack for making the people around her the greatest also. So to me, that's the, that's the true mark um, of not only a winning athlete, but like of a winning person, is that you care about the people that you're leading. Hey, Becky, at the end of the game, we won the championship last season. You guys played great team and individual defense. 
Mm -hmm. That stuff just doesn't show up in the box score. As you were watching that play unfold, Clark was playing Stewie pretty tough. Um, and then Jackie double teamed. What were you thinking when Jackie Shit. double teamed Stewie? And also, what did you say to the huddle before the play? We kind of had a mantra going into that series just overall, which was keep playing, keep playing, keep playing, get to the next play. Because this is a team that, you know, they can score quickly. They can hurt you in a lot of different ways. And it really came down. It actually happened to be Sloot at the end, which was the perfect person because you know Sloot saw Jackie tracking the whole time. Any other player may not have seen that player. I know with Sloot's vision, she saw Jackie, mm -hmm. who's, you know, one of the biggest, baddest defenders on the perimeter in the league. And she just saw her, and it was the next play, like, KP rotate. Like, it was just covering for each other the whole way. And we were just saying how, like, go make a play. Be active and then support each other behind it. And so you saw Jackie just go make a play. Like, at the end of the day, we felt like anybody but, like, Stewie shooting was a win. And so – and then you live with the results. You can't take everything away all the time, so you pick – what you're willing to live with. And so Jackie saw that she was trying to get some space and rhythm and went and made a play and then they just covered for each other. And uh, obviously, like I said, maybe if it was a different player, but I know Sloot saw her the whole time um, with the vision that she has on the court. Thanks a lot, ladies. We really Thanks. appreciate you guys coming.